absolutely and wholeheartedly oppose this bill. Mr Speaker, um, I call the Honourable Nikki Kane. Uh, firstly, can I just say to everybody watching that that was the most extraordinary speech, and I have a prediction. It will go viral. It will go viral for several reasons. It will go viral because the member opposite didn't read the bill. It will go viral. I'm not allowed to say that the, member, uh, the minister wasn't in the House, but what I can say is that it is extraordinary that he has not spoken on this bill. This is a bill about disadvantage. This is a bill about helping some of our most disadvantaged children and schools. And to get a lecture from the opposition about the fact that we don't care when they're voting down a bill about disadvantage is extraordinary. Can I acknowledge Erica? Uh, she's a fantastic new Member of Parliament. She's done extraordinary work on this bill. Can I also acknowledge the Honourable Hetty Prata? But let's cut to the chase. The reality is most and many principals and students who talk to me about decile, they want it scrapped. And the, opposite, and, the, and the government MPs also want it scrapped. We know that because they've said it previously. So the big political debate is what you replace the decile system with. So to have a speech again from that member about the fact that somehow decile might be OK and actually there's a problem with replacing it totally ignores her party's previous position on it. Second point. The question is then what you can replace it with. Again, we have been really clear, and it is extraordinary, that the minister wouldn't even bother to meet with a member who has spent hours developing this bill, of which ministry officials have spent hundreds of hours on the equity index, of which this bill implements uh, what people have spent an extraordinary amount of time on as part of the funding review to deliver. So uh, we get this letter at the ninth hour that says a whole lot of reasons that are based on totally incorrect assumptions around the bill. The facts are this bill enables not only the scrap scrapping of the decile system, we had put forward more money to enable disadvantaged kids to get more, but also a fairer distribution under this bill. It does intelligent things, like it does try and ensure that in the future you can't have the publication of some of this information, which the member raised in her speech, to ensure, and we've, we've, we've um, worked through with the Privacy Commissioner, but also OIA provisions, all very intelligent things that the minister is going to have to deal with. Erica hit the nail on the head. The reality is we've come up with a very sophisticated policy idea that is coming through this parliament because we believe it affects disadvantaged kids and we do need legislative change around some of the OAA provisions. And we can't understand why on earth a government that lectures us constantly around child poverty and disadvantage could possibly turn up to this House and vote against this bill to even get a first reading. And you know what? We do know why. When it comes to partnership schools, they're scrapping them. When it comes to the fact that there's been this record increase in Māori and Pacific career achievement, they won't acknowledge it. When it comes to a bill that will help some of the most disadvantaged children in New Zealand, the minister won't even do the courtesy of meeting with a member that has implemented one of the most sophisticated mechanisms for disadvantaged children. And that is one of the saddest things that I have seen in this House. I call Jamie Strange. Mr Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to speak on this bill.